When we're doing the shows, probably the most common question we get asked is where's the best place to buy in France? Well, it's not an easy question to answer because it's so dependent on each one of your own choices as such. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you the top five places I'd be looking at if I was thinking about buying a house in France today. To start with, I'm not a townie. I actually was born in the countryside, grew up on the Cornish coast and moved to central Brittany at the age of 16. So if you're looking for a video telling you the best city to live in, whether it be Paris, Bordeaux, Toulouse or Cannes, well, spoiler alert, this isn't it. Saying that though, if I do have to choose, I'll probably go for Bordeaux, but that's between me, you and the gatepost. So before I tell you my five best places, why don't you put in the comments where you think your best place in France is? So where's mine? Well, I'm going to start with Brittany, not for any particular reason, except the fact that I live here. So that's probably reason enough. Brittany is populated by the Bretons, uh, a Celtic race and very proud of their roots. But Brittany is also known for its Neolithic and maritime history. Did you know, for example, the actual coastline of Brittany itself represents one third of the total coastline of mainland France? They always say wherever you are in Brittany, you're never more than an hour away from the coast. Obviously, for this reason, we have a lot of trading ports. Thus, the Bretons tend to migrate all around the world. You'd be pretty sure wherever you go, you'll find a Breton somewhere. There's two ferry ports in Brittany, St Malo, which goes to Portsmouth, and Roscoff, which goes to Plymouth, but also to Ireland as well. Then you actually have the Rennes Airport, and to a certain extent, Nantes Airport. So fairly easy access to Brittany all year round. But as always with coastal uh, regions, the closer you get to the coast, the more expensive the houses. But there's still plenty of good buys further inland. If you're looking for a rural property, but don't want to be in the sticks and want fairly good access back to the UK, Brittany is probably quite a good place to think about looking. Next up is Normandy, which is literally just up from Brittany. Well known for its D-Day landing beaches, but for lots of other historical uh, sites, for example, the Bayeux Tapestry, the Giverny Gardens, which was Claude Monet's house, as well as the Mont Saint-Michel, which is known worldwide. The region is divided into Upper and Lower Normandy. Upper Normandy is very popular with the French and lots of prisons actually have coastal houses there due to the proximity to Paris. Lower Normandy, on the other hand, is very popular with the English, once again, because of the actual easy access to the UK with Cherbourg, Caen and Dieppe ferry ports. Normandy is slightly more rural than Brittany even, but this means you can actually get some big properties with plenty of land. So if you're looking for equestrian properties or such, then Normandy is well worth thinking about. The next two areas I'd actually consider are a bit further south. The first one is an old classic with the British. In fact, a very old classic. It dates back to about the 13th century and that is the Perigord region of France. Often confused with Dordogne, understandably so, because in fact Dordogne is probably about 90% of Perigord. The actual rest of it overlaps onto the surrounding departments. Perigord itself is actually divided into four sectors named after different colours. Yes, I did say colours. You have black, green, purple and white. Perigord Noir, black to the east, Perigord White to the west, Perigord Vert, to the north and Perigord Pop to the south. It has easy access to the UK and pretty well anywhere actually due to the fact there is multiple international airports within an easy drive of that region. I don't know if it's a knock-on effect of me being a state agent or maybe it's why I'm an estate agent, I don't know, but I actually love the old manor houses and chateaus and going around the old medieval villages and the Perigord region of France is literally crawling with them. They actually reckon in the Dordogne Valley, there's over a thousand castles. This ranging from the old medieval dungeon type castle to the actual modern Renaissance one. Obviously the further south you go, the hotter the summers get and longer, but also don't forget the winters can be a bit harsher than further north. But due to these long summers, there's a, a lot of more outdoor activities from alfresco eating markets through to lots of canoeing and uh, mountain biking etc etc. As always in France the house prices vary greatly over short distances but obviously down in that region there's no coastline. Now we think more along the lines of the big tourist centres. For example Brantum, Salo Canada and Lascaux. 
most of the tourist areas and a good part of the Dordogne Valley is in actually in the Perigord Noir. So this tends to make the Perigord Noir the more expensive region of the four regions of Perigord. But certainly within 20, 25 minutes drives of one of the big touristy towns, you can get, still get some very interesting purchases. The second area of the ones down south, I would consider, I'll, I'll be cheeky and say it'd be like a cheap alternative to Perigord in a way. And that is the Corrèze Limousin uh, region, which actually touches Perigord, uh, slightly to the east and north. And what I like about it is the rural aspect, but it's, it's actually very hilly and woody. In fact, it's very hilly. In fact, when does a hill become a mountain? That's a good question. Well, I did actually look it up and it's 625 meters. What I love about that is you can be driving along a windy woodland road and you come round a corner and you're suddenly looking out down over a valley 100 metres below you. You then carry on for another 5-10 minutes and you find yourself on top of a hill looking out over the countryside at an altitude of about 600 metres. Which I think is amazing, the actual variation of countryside down there. Due to the actual hillsides and the woodlands and the rural aspect, the actual area is fairly populated with small villages. Ideal for all those who like the actual outdoor lifestyle, whether it's walking dogs, fishing, riding, whatever. To the north, towards the Haute Vienne, things do actually level out, let's say. Uh, but because it levels out, you can get some bigger towns. And because you get the bigger towns, prices do go up slightly but there's still plenty of good buys to be had in that area there. And the final place on my list would be the region, let's say, uh, Vendée, Charente, Charente Maritime, basically because there's some lovely coastlines there. This is an interesting coastline because admittedly any further south after the Gironde River is actually, it's just one big coastline and it's reserved for surfers. So if you're a surfer, go down there certainly, but if you're not a surfer, there's not much point. <laughs> So back up into the Charente Maritime Vendée coastline, you've got, for example, Ile de Ré and the Ile de Ron, which are lovely places as well. But also all along the coastline beaches and sandy beaches, nice place to be. On the actual eastern border, you have some lovely woodland valleys, etc., uh, with lots of old mill houses and streams and you name it, which is a lovely area to visit. Another little bonus on that area, which I really love to pop into when I can, is what's called the Marie Poitvin otherwise known as the Venice Verte or Green Venice. This is a marshland area, it's a natural reserve of over 390 square miles and it's laced with little canals and you, it's nothing better than actually hiring a punt just paddling around in those canals for an afternoon on a nice summer's day. So that is another area well worth um, considering and what's more the way I look at it, if I did live there I'd still have an easy access to Brittany, Normandy Perigord and Corrèze. So it might be an ideal place for lots of you. As always, price-wise, close to the coast, more expensive. Inland, some quite cheap deals to be had. If you got this far, you've probably found this actual video interesting. So in that case, do you mind clicking the like, subscribe and bell button? Do me a favour and I'll be back soon with another one. But in the meantime, if you're thinking about buying a house in France, check out this video here about choosing an agent.